thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And I really appreciate the uh, opportunity before this committee, and I appreciate the engagement of the committee members in the prior hearing we had on this topic. House Resolution 206 proposes uh, an amendment for proposing constitutional amendments under Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution. Uh, our framers of our U.S. Constitution reserved intentionally the opportunity for state legislatures to propose amendments to the Constitution with the thought process being that if our form of government requires fixes that have issues that originate in the Capitol itself, that there needs to be some means of addressing that outside of the Capitol. So what I have in front of us is an application to Congress, and the way the rules work under Article 5, just to reference the uh, hearing, is that um, uh, two-thirds of states would need to request uh, under an application like this to call for an amendment to propose, or a convention to propose amendments, and uh, then at that point, that, uh, that convention would be in line to propose amendments to the Constitution. Those amendments proposed at that convention would then need to be ratified by three quarters of states. It is a very high bar that must be met. Specifically, this resolution in front of us proposes to uh, ask for a convention to propose amendments to the U.S. Constitution for the sole purpose of limiting the power of the federal government, its, a its agencies, and its officers. Um, one thing that is worth noting is there have been there have been a large number of applications to Congress over the years for an Article 5 convention on different subjects. Those different <coughs> subjects have never individually reached the two-thirds requirement to trigger a convention. Uh, as it stands right now, 15 states have proposed and have passed resolutions like this, uh, proposing a, a convention for, uh, for the purpose of, of amending the Constitution. Uh, so with this, we, we propose to make Pennsylvania the 16th state to join that list so that we can address those questions that we have as far as the, the overreach of federal power. I, I want to bring up a few examples to uh, make that case. So first, to start out, the U.S. federal government was created by the consent of the states that ratified the Constitution for certain enumerated powers. And those certain enumerated powers, uh, we can certainly think of examples. The common national defense, foreign trade, currency and banking. But as we start thinking about those enumerated powers, and then we start thinking about how our federal government operates today, does that sort of construct sound like the sort of system that would logically lead to the situation we state legislators find ourselves in today? Let me give you an example. The federal income tax ranges from 10 to 37 percent. Our state income tax is 3.07. The federal corporate tax is 21 percent. Ours is 9.99. Highway funding. There are many ways in which we may propose to set up laws about our highways, but we've got to be careful because if we run afoul of federal strings attached, we're going to lose a much bigger chunk of money than, than what we might be able to originate within our own state. Human service funding. There might be ways that we could propose to make our system work better for Pennsylvania, but if we try to make a change that might be a little bit more efficient, that might save a million dollars here or there, we're going to find ourselves losing billions of dollars because we don't quite comply with the federal strings attached. Ways we, we structure our unemployment compensation system, same thing. So we can't set our own state policies apart from the federal permissions or waivers or without worry that our constituents' money will go through the beltway never to return. So let's get to the real fundamental truth. Federal presidential elections are too high stakes. Republicans were despondent when President Obama won two terms. Democrats have been similarly despondent when President Trump was elected. We know that California is different from Texas. We know that New York is different from Alabama. This proposal returns a greater degree of policy and self-determination back to the states. Congress, as we see, is fractured and polarized. Lawmaking is taking a back seat to the easy to implement executive order. Rather than veering on this path every four or eight years, why not let these decisions be made to a greater extent in Harrisburg or in Sacramento, perhaps in Albany, Mon Montgomery, or Austin? If all of us in here can argue that they can agree that Washington has its problems, we might not agree on exactly what those problems are. But the question is this, can Washington be fixed from within? Are we willing to admit that salvation can only originate from within the beltway? I'm not willing to admit that. This resolution follows the Constitution in a manner that the framers intentionally set out for us. This is the only means of reform that can originate outside of Congress, outside of Washington, D.C. As state legislators, we have the opportunity to originate this important endeavor, and I respectfully ask my colleagues for an affirmative vote. Thank you. <coughs>
Thank you, Representative Gobbler. Go to conventionofstates.com, press the button, sign the petition. More importantly, get 10 of your friends to do the same. When you sign the petition, then that sends a letter to your state legislator. You go on the list in their district as a supporter. We deliver those lists to the state legislators. It means something to them.